Welcome everyone to this very interesting and exciting presentation with Debbie Richardson from Nine Boxes. We have a strategic marketing service for agencies presentation for you. Welcome Debbie. Hi Clover, thanks so much. Lovely to be here. Now Debbie, we're going to get straight into this. Tell us more about the Nine Boxes methodology and how it's actually going to help agencies in 2021 and beyond. Thanks, Clodagh. Uh, one of the things we speak to our, we work with agencies and we speak to agencies all the time. And what our research has shown us, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about a bit later about um, the disconnect at times between clients and, and their agencies. But what we've really found is that agencies were creative. They then became digital. Uh, but what they really need is a strategy. They need to, they need to actually be uh, in control or have some input into their client strategy. And what we found is strategy creates a you know a deep connection with clients at C-suite, which is ultimately what uh, every every agency wants. Brilliant. Yeah. And what is the actual framework, Debbie? Can you give it a, a describe this? Yeah, framework? so I can, yeah, I can give you a quick overview. So um, I came out of, just a bit of background, I came out of corporate uh, to, uh, I worked at News Corp in, in London and then in another global corporate. Uh, and I came out and I started working with um, sort of ambitious small to medium sized businesses. And I actually found they had no access to strategy. So I developed the nine boxes and the nine boxes is a, it's a data driven framework that actually it, 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 the clients and agencies use it from a conceptual perspective. There's tools, there's techniques, but it just gives a structured delivery process um, for, for an agency to engage with a client at, you know, from a strategic perspective. Excellent. And your values, I've, I've, I've ne learned about you, uh, Debbie, a long time ago through a mutual friend of ours. And um, your values are just so solid. You educate, you give confidence, and you are provocative. Tell us more about those actual values. Yeah, abs absolutely. When we started building the nine boxes, we looked at what type of business are we? And, um, and we started talking about these values then. And um, we're definitely an education business. So we actually, I mean, I would say that we teach businesses how to build a marketing strategy, how to engage with strategy. Um, and actually, the confidence piece is all around um, helping our stakeholders make confident decisions around marketing. You know, our benchmark has been taken by over 4,000 businesses globally. And the thing that the feedback that we get is, is actually they have a lack of confidence around making decisions in a marketing space. And we want to give our clients confidence. Um, and for us, we love stretching our own thinking and our clients thinking. So we are provocative in our conversations and, and that the value sit at the heart of what we do and our products. And they're really, really important to us. So any agencies that we work with, we want them to have similar values to us. Excellent. So today we're, what, what we want to cover is we're going to look at the challenges that agencies are experiencing. Um, a lot of them are exacerbated with 2020 and all the shenanigans that have occurred and we're still in the hangover of that early 2021. But what agencies believe um, and what clients believe, we have uncovered some incredible research done by a friend and a student of the Digital Marketing Institute, uh, Stevie Brown. We have a cycle of a small business, which I, I, I remember when I showed it to you, Debbie, we had an aha moment going, oh, that's why life has been. We so bit did. We absolutely did. Yeah. Oh, that's why life has been a bit difficult. The marketing dilemma that our clients actually face, how it could look for you by actually implementing this strategic marketing service in your agency, how it would work for you if it, that's something that was um, you were interested in, and then how you would get your score and what next steps. So we'll get dive straight in and talk about the challenges. I mean, last year was just a hell of a year, but these challenges had been kind of there in a very low format, but then they really came to the surface here. So things like a client going on pause, the minute the 
um, there was lockdowns, there was a pandemic, there was a lot of clients just went pause. So they didn't see the value in working with an agency. And that really spiraled agencies out of control. Um, perhaps the marketing manager just made a knee jerk decision, but then they came back because the CEO went, no, this is actually really important that we continue the marketing or not. Some agencies hadn't managed to get themselves at that CEO boardroom table and they they weren't being able to show the value that they had they were afraid to make the wrong decisions a lot of clients were just paralyzed they um, and they didn't have the confidence that more marketing was going to help them they couldn't see the path and um, losing traction typically at about a nine month mark very typical for agencies to lose clients at nine months because client isn't getting the results that they thought they were going to get waiting for things to return to normal. There's some dinosaurs still out there, Debbie, right? People are still going, right, absolutely. when I get back to the office. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I think also one of my um, least favorite uh, things to come out of last year was the new normal. Oh, geez. It's like, no. let, let's just get on with it. <laughs> no. You know, it's like, but I think just touching on your point at the beginning of this is they're, they're not these are these are actually classic challenges that agencies have faced yeah um, they've just been brought to the they're, they're, they're just heightened um over the over the period of 2020 that's so, right they were more condensed these these were kind of hanging around or they were smaller and then they really became like clients jumped on and stopped and and paused and all of that kind of thing yeah and um, yeah. there was also a big um difference as well with agencies are very flexible open-minded their um personalities people so when they were told to work from home it was so quick for them to work from home you know they just took mm. their laptops and they worked from home they started work the next day but a lot of bigger organizations um who have a lot of red tape or bureaucracy or had never had laptops for their staff it mm. took them weeks possibly months yeah. even figure yeah. out how to do it. and some I know some countries didn't even work from home at all like Saudi Arabia yeah. the kingdom you know Dubai a lot of people they the, the policy is never to work from home so they mm. literally stopped working so it's been yeah. very very challenging for those agencies in um, in Dubai I, I have friends up there who were, were looking at that but cancelling the retainers also very hard to develop and justify in the first instance loads of free pitching education this is a huge challenge for agencies where now they don't go and do it anymore where they'll go out physically to the client and do a big pitch but there's still a lot of invitations for oh will you present th this information um and you're an agency can lose a lot of money doing that for free mm -hmm. also clients were not seeing the value in marketing because they're expecting sales and we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that we are yeah which is fascinating. And finally, their agencies not having a relationship with the CEO or the board of their clients. That's the main one there, right, Debbie? Mm, for me, um, that's fundamentally the, the 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 problem that the nine boxes solves is, um, you know, actually agencies being further up the food chain and helping the CEO and the leadership team really understand the value of marketing. Excellent. So what do agencies believe marketing means and delivers? So what, what we've uncovered um, through research, through your research, through our experience, through talking to clients and talking to agencies, talk to us here about in the agency, you know, I'll stand on the agency side of things very much so with my experience of working with them and, and owning one. This is what an agency believes. Yeah, look, I, th I think that, and I think, Part of it is what the agency believes, but I think it's also partly what the client believes. When they're looking for marketing, um, they're really looking, they think they're looking to bring visitors and leads or sales, however we however we want to describe it. And and often and and, and it contributes to um, you know sales and leads and all of that. But it, it's it's actually there's a really big strategic piece that needs to be attached to business growth and and uh, and some of the decisions that you make at a at a business level. So you know one of the things we talk about um, with our clients is you know how to attach your marketing strategy to your business strategy. Um, so that that's a, that's something you, you know you'll hear me talk about a lot. Um, I also think that um, even today you know we run presentations and we ask. Um, we ask CEOs and leadership leaders, um, you know, 
what what does marketing mean to you and they list off a whole ro ro um, a, a roll call of like tactics so creating ads brochures websites um, and from my perspective you know they, they are marketing tactics and again what you'll hear us talk about a lot is the difference between strategy and tactics mm -hmm. um Everyone still think, and I, I do think that's the biggest conversation that marketing firms should be having with their clients. Yeah. Um, there's little understanding of strategic marketing, the business planning process. And the thing that we're building here is we're giving a strategy, a currency and a data. So you can get your marketing score and then start to build programs. So yeah. I just think that everyone's talking to tactics and sales and they should be talking strategy and business growth. Yeah, and particularly in the digital marketing world, there's there's so much technology. There's like over 7,000 pieces of marketing technology that goes out around to actually create those campaigns and those ads and those things. And I know from working in the digital marketing world, uh, owners, uh, people in the digital marketing world, they're very passionate and excited about the software. So, for example, if they are a HubSpot partner, they get very excited about uh, sharing that oh, look at the software which will bring you visitors and leads and it does your campaigns and it does your emails so very quickly instead of standing back and which is what we're talking about here of doing the strategic piece you get straight into the tactics of how does the email work how does the campaign work and it's it's all carried along with the excitement of and a fantastic software that had not existed before yeah, and actually the client and the agency conversation fuel each other, which we're going to talk about in a sec when we go That's to right. Stevie's model. Yeah, and also when an agency that, you know, I've, I've yet to meet a boring agency owner, they're such interesting, charismatic, passionate, great salespeople as well. So that perception of, oh, this is a sales thing. And really, it's actually about <laughs> it's marketing. Mm. So what clients yeah. end up believing about marketing, probably because of the passion, the enthusiasm, the great sales process, is they actually have this thing that they're getting sales, that magically mm. all this work is going to get sales. Mm. Um, but they never say that to the agency. Mm. That's what that's what they're coming for. Yeah. Um, and what and what and what that's what they're coming for and actually they're probably coming at a time when they're really desperate and one of the things that we really talk about is any marketing strategy worth having takes about six months to start generating leads so if a client comes to a business uh, if a client comes to an agency and they're looking for immediate sales because things are getting a bit desperate it, it's just you're on a hiding to nothing uh, and, and I just think what the nine boxes does is it actually explains about the relationship between marketing and sales and really manages expectations around around each of these points here. Yeah. So even though clients will come to an agency and say uh, it's marketing, yes, marketing, visitors and leads, yes, marketing, they really do have this expectation of sales. Uh, lots of yeah. sales ready hot leads so the visitors come in yeah. and they're going to hop in the door and they're going to ring up and they're going to yeah. place orders and that the yeah. marketing that the agency is going to do is actually going to close sales leads yeah again so that, it just never it, it, it never works like this and we, we are just yeah. continuing to perpetuate an urban myth as a as, as, as a sector if yeah. we tell if we tell clients that this is what uh, they're going to get, then we're, we're not telling the truth. And this has actually come out. This is where we had our huge aha moment. Uh, one of the yeah. things I started doing last year was mentoring uh, digital ma uh, marketing institute students who are doing their masters. And Stevie was uh, a, one of the ladies that I worked with, and she was off doing research all about um, the 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 discommunication and the misunderstanding between businesses and uh, and marketing agencies and marketing itself so this was the impossible cycle of a small business where the small business comes in and it just goes they have no budget they really haven't sat down and allocated x amount so they'll kind of scrape a little bit together they'll do a diy solution so they might have a friend who will teach them how to do a bit of facebook ads right for, for example or they'll just start something they'll just pull ideas out of the sky. They'll just go, oh, I'll try Facebook ads or they'll be on Instagram and they'll see an Instagram ad. There's a lot of hope 
and it's just hope and hope and the small business owner or the business owner or the marketing department they've got other things to do in the business the marketing doesn't work they get poor yeah. results then there's not enough new business there's no new customers and there's still no budget and we're back in this cycle again and it's just impossible and and i can just tell you what before we actually um started um offering nine boxes to agencies i actually ran a marketing firm of my own uh to, to build the nine boxes and the proof of concept so you know i've got stories uh to the wazoo of uh you know how, how the nine boxes work i can tell you that and, and i don't I, I was looking at the word small then and i was thinking actually this isn't small businesses it's actually a lot it's like many businesses right so um and it and it and i can tell you i would probably say that 100% of the clients that i worked with over the four years i was building this product and um and proving you know doing my market my product my, my market survey my what am i saying my product market fit sorry yeah. that's friday afternoon yeah uh, my product market fit um it was this was the story of almost 100 percent of those businesses yeah so We're i loved it when i saw stevie's diagram you and i just went oh my goodness mate. oh it's we had the most that fascinating conversation I was like, oh my god that's why it's so hard now exactly yeah we're, we're keeping it there it's a small business because that that is actually what stevie's thesis was on but this could be a marketing yeah. department and um, yeah. sometimes as well the, the the marketing sometimes in marketing managers marketing cmos uh, did actually uh, do their education in you know the 90s the 80s when there wasn't a lot of digital and then they have a younger staff and it, there's a lot of disconnect so this could be representative of a marketing department inside a large organization yeah, yeah. absolutely and yeah. and then what we realized is okay so this this particular one we look at this one here this is fine enough this this is a struggle enough if it's just self-contained but then what happens is maybe the company goes sure you know what we'll bring in an agency into this and we'll make this very very difficult because that's well. gonna make it work Clodagh. that's gonna now we bring in work. another group of people and we'll bring the pain in and we'll extend this cycle so now they have some budget so they found a little bit of budget somewhere down the back of the couch they're engaging third party so they're actually going to bring in an agency but the briefing isn't very well done and remember what we talked about earlier on it's about they actually really think sales the wires get crossed because it's this two different conversations. One is happening up here. I want, you know, I'm here as an agency to do your marketing. The other one is coming in going, this, these guys are going to sell for us. It's going to be great. And we can put our feet up on the desk. The relationship starts to fail. The marketing doesn't work, you know, inverted commas there. And then you're going back into that cycle. I think what happens as well, and I've seen this happen too, is when the agency is in for a certain period of time and the cracks start to form the client then turns around and says something like i knew this wasn't going to work this is what happened with the last agency yeah and it's just deflating for that agency that they're going oh god they don't believe in me oh this didn't work before why didn't you tell me you tried this before and there's just such a, a level of miscommunication so then they go and try again but it really does have an inevitable failure and some budget now i tell you myself and stevie were working through this on her master's and her thesis it was a real realization i've been and in you were like i have to share it with the world i was, like, I'm yeah. so, I was going i've been in this game for 13 years and and some things have gone really well but a lot of times it's a real real struggle and this is how we we have what we have realized but great news there is a way to break Great news. I can, can I can I just go back to that other yeah. thing? Thank you. I think you know if if and I and I just talking just watching you to talk to that slide. The thing that's really great to understand is like the nine boxes. If you're a, if if you're an agency at point two, and you bring in the nine boxes, it absolutely takes out that poor briefing and cross wires like brilliant like literally that is what it solves so yeah, yeah thank you next you can, slide you can we, we can and this is how we're going to break the cycle so taking yeah. that area here talk to us about how we're going to break the cycle so so one of the things that uh, so going back to that education piece of our values one of the things that we teach uh, you know to, to, to anyone that will talk to us is basically the, 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 the business planning cycle Mm. and where marketing fits in that 
and um, I won't talk too much about operating market, but um, I will talk about um, the two things that sit either side of the marketing strategy, which is the business plan and tactical implementation. So what we tend to find is almost every business has some sort of business plan. You know, it's uh, it's either, you know, on a be a mat or war and peace, but they do have a business plan or some idea of growth. And then they rush into tactical implementation. Gosh, the yeah. bit they don't do is actually the planning piece around what should marketing strategy be doing? What, you know, what they just run out and do Facebook ads or actually run ads, should we speak at a conference? Or, they don't actually think about the marketing strategy. That's the bit that's missing. And that's the bit that the nine boxes are uh, fills in. Brilliant. And talk so to break you. the cycle. Yeah, break the cycle. So just so that we're really clear as well, because somebody might, an agency, be like, no, no, I definitely do the strategy. Let's just talk here now about when we say strategy versus tactics. What's the yeah, key okay. difference here? Great. And, I, you know, I, I think this is, the, uh, you know, mo almost all of these slides are important. But to me, this is the most important slide because yeah. you've got to help a client see the difference between strategy and tactics. So it's the most important uh, conversation any agency should be having. And if you're talking about logos, Facebook, website, advertising, sponsorship, all of those things in the tech, you're having a tactics conversation. If you're talking about vision, values, product, brand, channels, data, you're having a strategic conversation. And so those are just two examples. And what the nine boxes does is it absolutely takes you down the strategy conversation. You cannot have a tactical conversation when you're talking nine boxes. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think it's, it's, it, that's a great, you know, your question is, you know, what's the difference? And, and to us there, the, that's a simplistic way to, to define it. And I just want to say as well, you know, just highlight here, we're not, this isn't about now as an agency, we're never going to do any of these things again. <laughs> you know, you're, no. this is about knowing we're getting deep into that client and the relationship and doing the strategy in order that you can do next year's logo and the following year's oh, logo. The, Claire, right? It's absolutely, it's actually about bettering for the nine boxes is about better informing the core of the it, it's what the agencies do well so um but it actually just informs um better deliver better deliverables better tactics better measured results so it just makes the work they're doing now just shine yeah and and stay with that client longer so that like i said you're yeah. doing the next one you might be doing one website yeah. and in two and three years time you're doing the next yeah. website as opposed yeah, to that absolutely. nine months they're bouncing off they've gone somewhere else you are building yeah. such a big long relationship with them and uncovering things that is going to yeah. bring you more tactical work when that's at the yeah. right time but instead of going straight into the tactics we're we're, to, yeah. we're talking about the strategy so if, if, we look if at, you have in, if you have insights into the strategy you can absolutely inform the tactics. That's how we look at it. Brilliant. Yeah. So if we look at the typical digital marketing services that are here, talk us through these particular ones that we we identified. So so fundamentally, what what we find is um, the what, the agencies that we start working with, they tend to be focusing on the thirty to sixty you know, campaigns, like very short term ad hoc campaigns. So a client comes to you, their pipeline's looking a bit dry. They want to have some sales, so they focus on campaigns, and, and it, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And to your point earlier, um, too, there's too much focus on technology and not enough on strategy. It's like technology helps us solve problems, but you need to unearth the problems through the strategic thinking and the strategic conversation. So technology is fabulous, but it is so much better if you have a, if you have a strategy attached to it. Yeah. So and, yeah, but, and back to. Yeah, with the technology as well, a lot of people, we because we learned how to use it. You know, I'm I'm definitely not a digital native. We only had a we had a computer room in our <laughs> school, <laughs> you know, yeah. that we went that we went yeah. to the week. But obviously, since then, with smartphones, I've just learned how to do it. So a lot of people in the digital marketing world are just so, so comfortable with apps and you know are yeah. you on clubhouse and are you doing this yeah. but most yeah. people aren't like that they, they're actually a little bit scared of technology or they're a little bit intimidated yeah. by it 
And so when you go, go balling in talking about the technology, what you don't realize is that somebody might be scared or afraid or, or, or doesn't want to look silly in front of you. So yeah, that's another absolutely. reason to park the technology for the moment. <laughs> we know it's yeah. there. It's great. But not a lot of people are as excited about it as we are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and the other, you know, the other just just finishing that that those last two points of it goes back to what we were saying. Um, it's managing clients' expectations around when they're going to get some measurable results. And typically, it's um, you know all, all digital marketing seems to be is just way too tactical. Yeah. So, so really, that those are the those are the that those are what typically comes out from digital marketing. Services. Brilliant. So, bring us here to so so this is the nine boxes. Uh, ta -da. this is the nine boxes and actually it's a and we won't talk too much about this um but fundamentally it's a, a framework for a strategic marketing conversation so we believe that there are nine levers that any business can pull uh nine marketing levers that any business can pull for growth and commercial advantage uh, and these are they uh, and what all, all we've done is um simplify something extremely co complex um, into a nice uh, nine boxes and uh, you know happy that I could I could bore for England about about how these have worked for clients but fundamentally that's what it is yeah so starting there with the find um, at the very top and working down through it yeah so basically what you do we'll show you should you go in and you get your you get your marketing score uh, and effectively your marketing score then uh, helps your client understand where its strengths and weaknesses are in each of these nine boxes. Amazing. So um, it gives you, the benchmark gives you a gap analysis. So you can actually start having a conversation with your client about which bits they're good at, which bits they're not so good at, and the services that you can provide to, 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 to skill your, your clients up. So your, um, your benchmark is with how many? companies as well like um so so our, we have got four thousand we've tested this within an inch of its life and uh, the benchmark actually is 45 questions that every business should be asking of itself Brilliant. and four thousand businesses have been through the um benchmark globally so mm -hmm. you know it's not just um you know we, we've got businesses of all sizes uh in all different locations um uh, all, all sectors uh so we've got a really good robust data set and it's growing uh, and it actually time. growing every time um what we do connect it to is this um what does uh you know what does a business need um from you know what, sorry when does a business need strategic marketing and actually a business needs marketing all of, through all of these different phases it just needs a different level and again if you're a seed business, if you're a mature business, if you're an established business, the nine boxes actually judges the level of marketing that you, that you need and, and, and how to connect it to your business plan at that, at that growth period. Fantastic. And who is a good fit for adopting the nine boxes? Talk to us about this. So um, we are looking, uh, we are working and looking uh looking at working with agencies that want a deeper client a deeper client relationship like who doesn't want that you know okay. who wants to be part of the of the leadership team um there are agencies that want longer retainers and 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 but not only longer retainers for uh retainers sake but valued by the client so the client can see what we're delivering month after month um they also want to move their conversations to the C-suite. So, you know, the marketing person is always important. But actually, one of the things that we've really found in the last few years and, and looking at the benchmark is we need the C-suite to understand what marketing strategy is. You know, it isn't a brochure. It's not a Facebook ad. Mm -hmm. It's not last week's reception is fixing up the website. It actually gives us commercial advantage. Yeah. And... You know, there are agencies that want to improve their strategic skills. You know, we teach them how to become strategists uh, and they want to improve their own strategic skills so they can deliver them to clients. Amazing. And why why do you believe and why do we believe? Because, you know, we believe this. Why do we believe that agencies need the nine boxes? Look, I think marketing has typically been one of those things that is looked at as, as being a bit sort of like pushing 
pushing water uphill with a rake, you know, something that you can't quite grab hold of. So the nine boxes is a framework that actually keeps the agency and the client on track. So effectively, everybody's working from the same score, from the same program. Uh, it, it manages expectations of both the agency and the client. Um, it also educates and builds trust. So, so fundamentally, uh, it's just about strong relationships. Everybody really knows why they're doing what they're doing and what you're heading towards. The nine boxes attaches your marketing investment um, to your business plan. So you're always talking at that, at that business objective. You know, if I spend this money, what's it actually going to deliver? And because of the way it's structured, it really it delivers um, step by step pro. It delivers step by step programs that really help um, clients build uh, capability and action based deliverables. So it just makes sure everyone is on the same page. Yeah, and at, at this particular time, you know, more than ever before, clients are looking for something to like believe and trust in. They actually really want some predictability in a world that keeps changing. This is unwavering. It's still you, somebody knows. Okay, I know where I am in the process here. They need to report up. You know, they need to report to the board. It's okay. What we're doing is working. Um, the world might be changing, things might be, but we have a, a plan to go back to instead of, like you said, a bit of the unknown sometimes of marketing. And that's why clients stop and pause. Uh, but with this, there's less likely of that happening because there is a process and it's staying and it's keeping moving forward and, and they can see where they are in the process. That's another thing. People are just looking for stability and some predictability and they, and they can come back to this and go, Oh, it's okay. I know where I am in this now. And then they keep moving forward. You know, what's really interesting, uh, it, the, the, um, the two words that some marketing people don't like, but actually a lot of people do like is structure and framework. Yeah. Like uh, if the, as I've taken this around the world, just presenting it to small to medium sized businesses and agencies, they've went, they, they've used that word structure and the word framework. And, it's, and, and, and people have said, oh, two things you'd never associate with marketing. So if that's, my, if that's my legacy, then that's my legacy. Brilliant. Now, if an agency, if you're listening to this and you're going, oh, God, I wonder if I have any clients for this or am I you know, a good fit? Like what's, talk to us about what, what are the types of clients that um, an agency, you know, like obviously this is for established agencies. You've, you know, it's not for, you're not brand out of the box, but let's talk about the clients yeah. that you no, have no, no. already. Yeah. Okay, so in, in our sort of period of product market fit, um, you know, we've got asked lots of questions. Oh, is it, is it a $20 million or $20 million business? Is it a $50 million business? It, do they need 50 employees, 100 employees? Actually, it's more of a criteria and a behavior. Mm -hmm. um, so it actually works for any size of business. Um, the, the, the good clients over the years, the good clients are, you need to be connected to the CEO. Um, and typically it's much better if it's privately owned and controlled because you know, we're, we're, working with, we're working with the people that have control of budgets and decisions. Nice. Um, they, they tend to be ambitious SMBs that are prepared to invest in themselves. So they've got a growth target. That they've got a defined growth target that sits at the center of their business. So we love it when a client comes to us and they go, oh, we want to grow from 21, 20, 21 million to 80 million, or we want to grow from 80 million to, you know, they've got a growth target, but they know they've got to invest in themselves um, to get that, you know, they're not going to grow their business by 10 million, 15 million, any million uh, without investing some money. So they're not coming to you with pocket change. Um, you know, they, they, they know, it goes back to that, they have a budget. Yeah. Um, we typically find that if they're connected and working with other professional services, so a lot of clients that we work with have already got a business plan. So they've either got um, an advisory board, a board or an, a good accounting firm. Um, and more importantly, they have to be in the right headspace for growth. Like that to us is that's what we're checking for through our process. Right. So, uh, so that's uh, an idea. This uh, out of all of the clients that we've worked with, these are the good ones. 
and this is you know some some a lot of the agencies that obviously know me and um, and and I'm in that network are are the HubSpot agencies and uh, a lot of those agencies were sort of encouraged to go after niches, um, industry niches, geography niches. Mm -hmm. Um, it, we're not saying that that's not a good strategy, but if you think of it now, it's a global world, right? You know, the yeah. companies can work wherever. And sometimes it's about the personality of working with these people. You know, you, you do want absolutely. a company with a growth mindset, someone you're going to get on with. There's absolutely no point picking a niche that's hot or is going to go off if you've no interest in it <laughs> you know but also the other it does work you know it, this so what we've done over the over the product market fit period is we have a range of we, we have an absolute range of clients that we work with we've worked with construction companies we've worked with tech companies the nine boxes actually works for any business it actually works for you know it, it was built out of my my corporate experience so it actually works for corporates yeah but it, it's these are the clients that we've seen work for time and time again and it's Brilliant. it's those things yeah so talk to us about the actual process so the process is pretty simple uh and everything you'll see about nine boxes is, is super simple um so they go on and get a benchmark so this is they get their score um and all of the leaders inside the business um uh, take the take the benchmark they get their score and there you can see their alignment that takes about 10 to 15 minutes to do um, there's then a strategic marketing assessment process where you start looking at the business's business plan you look at their scores you have a workshop facilitation and then you give them a recommendations document and our process allows you to do that within two weeks yeah um, and um, I love that little no entry sign. So they can stop when they've done the benchmark. They can stop when they've done the strategic marketing assessment. Then we go into a period of customer insight. So um, we actually have a product that makes um, customer insights available for small to medium sized businesses. Research or insight is typically expensive. We've actually found a way to deliver uh, customer insights for small to medium sized businesses at great at, at a really good cost. Nice. Um, and what we then find is they go into the retained services. So there's that series of products, then they go into retained services. This typically takes, um, it probably takes about three months to get them to retain, to deliver each of those three areas. And by then, you have got to know them and they have got to know you and you can decide how you're going to work together. And for me, that's the, that's the great thing around the process. Yeah. And, and again, one of the challenges that we had talked about, and I, I'd actually talked about this uh, in, inside in HubSpot, God, like when I was working there, I could see too many agencies educating clients, running around, doing so much free work. And it was like, you know, mate, what are you doing going and doing it? I, I thought, were you not in with that client last week? And they went, oh, they want another presentation for the board and all of this. And you're just doing so much free work. So this is fantastic. From the very beginning here, there is a, a way of earning, uh, getting paid for your knowledge, really, <laughs> in the very yeah, beginning. Oh, absolutely. And what we've done is we've developed, oh, again, product market fit period. We've developed a series of products that agencies can sell to their clients. Yeah. And they can also use P1 to P3 as business development tools. So um, it's a, a, a range of products that is, is that structured framework piece that I was talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, even the product engagement is structured. Everybody knows um, uh, exactly where they're going next. So, um, you know, it, it's a, it's a you know, and that's what's available as part of the nine boxes package. There's the, the whole digital benchmarking tool, but also then these six products that really enable you to have a retained relationship with your yeah. customer. So you can be there with us at this. And these are just, you know, we're, we're looking at, we just put USD in here just as an, but whatever local uh, currency. You yeah, want. local currency. Yeah. 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 And so they're all priced. I mean, part, part of what we did was work out, um, you know, the value of these products vis-a-vis -vis what the client would be prepared to pay. So, you know, again, product market fit, what's the expectation of an SMB to spend and what value do we create in each of these products? So these products are all set up and ready to go, ready for the agencies to pick up. Yeah, it's brilliant. So you've got the benchmark, they move to the company report, you've got the masterclass, the online products, 
And then, like you said, that could be where they they go, geez, we have all we need now. Thanks a million. We're going to go off for a while. And then they might come back or they might just, that, that's the way it is. But you got paid for all the steps. They got such yeah. high value, things that they can actually use and, and move forward with. But like you said, you've spent time with them now. So, you know, you've built a relationship, yeah. built rapport. And if you like them, you want to keep moving on with them. You can move them over to the strategic marketing assessment customer insights and then strategic services that go on and on and on and and those relationships last such a lot longer time because of the start that you had together yeah because of the strategic conversation and these are the types of um these are and this will be interesting to most agency owners but this is the types of fees that you can command from a you know an engagement um so you know uh, d- depending on size of clients, client A, client B, client C, you know, the, the, there's clients that we've had that have been, you know, had values of 105,000 a year, which is, you know, and it, the 105,000 a year is terrific, but actually it's the retained income that's really nice. Um, you know, and so, so there's a very, you know, a small, you know, we've worked with a, um, you know, a, a $6 million law firm that, that paid us 42,000 a year, We've worked with a, you know, $80 million business that paid us 105, you know, so it's all about depending on what the client client needs, but right. again, structure around fees as well as around deliverables. And stability. And they go, okay, I know where I am in the process here. So yeah. how would this change an agent? So talk to us here about you, you can actually change your agency with nine boxes. You can. So I, I think, you know, what, what I've proved by delivering the nine boxes to clients is, you know, we'll actually show them, we can we can show them value and ROI on their marketing. They're happy to engage in a retained relationship because they know what's coming. Um, the programs and the educational tools and concepts actually take away that fear of making wrong decisions. So, you know, you're actually making decisions jointly with your client and your client's understanding why 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 you're both doing what you're doing um there's less knee jerk of that pausing you know um we build the nine but with the nine boxes you can build programs um and those programs are month to month you know these are the tasks we're going to do this month these are the tasks we're going to do next month and and it actually manages clients expectations um well, what we're always talking about with our, with our, any stakeholder that we engage with, with the like, this, this is normal. There's no return to normal. Um, you know, you've just got to bloody get on with it. So that's what we're teaching. We're teaching our clients. Um, and we really, we do not, we have never worked from a nine boxes perspective. We've never worked with a client where we have not been working with the CEO. It's, a, it's actually our non-negotiable Um you know, if, if we're not at the table with this, we, we tend to work with the whole business, but if we don't have a regular access to the CEO, um, we, 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 we're we just not doing what we should be doing. Right. Yeah. Um, and because of the way we've just talked about the structure of the tools, you do get paid for everything that you do. It's it's not just a lot of free work. So, right. um, so really, you know, for us, it, it, it's game changing for agencies. Yeah, we tackled all of these challenges that... Uh, uh, like we said, we had been experienced 2019, 2018 before all that got exacerbated yeah. last year. But we identified all of these challenges. And, and this is a way of thriving through those and surviving. Absolutely. 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 So what would the actual onboarding process look like for a client? So, um, so dead, much- dead simple. You go, in, you go into your score. Uh, you get your score. Uh, you then do an internal assessment of what the business is looking like. You then speak to customers and do an external, and then you go in to build your programs. It's yeah. like that is that is a, and we've done this with every client. It's yep. proven, it's tested, um, and clients love it. So yeah, we're we're going to get asked for. We're going to do an internal understanding, external, and then off we go to grow. And we're, we'll teach you that whole process. This is, it's, oh, here's, it, we're not going to throw a load of documents. There is a whole process that we'll teach an agency how to do and teach their strategist and teach all the aspects of all the work that you've to put in for this. Uh, you've got all of those documentation. We've got the uh, all the yes and no's, uh, everything that you need. So how would you yeah. get started? Uh, so, well, they can call me or you. 
um, yeah. and uh, they they should get their own benchmarking score. So when you and I were talking about how we um, how we go about helping agencies understand this, we both said, well, why don't they get their own score? So if you're an agency leader and you want to put your leadership team through a score, contact me or Foda, and we'll we'll give you access to the benchmark. And then book a score with a book a call with us to go through your scores and your results, and and then we can go from there. And we're really happy to discuss if it's a good fit for your agency. Or not. Exactly. So if you're you're watching this, it's going to be on a landing page. The the benchmark is going to be down below, or if you're on a YouTube video, you'll just go down to the notes, just so you know where where we'll we'll put that link as well. So. If you have any questions, you know exactly where to get in touch with us. I'm going to put all the details about how to get in touch with us. We would definitely want to have a conversation with you. And we really look forward to helping you grow your agency with nine boxes.